So this lesson is going to be on Newton's Law of Cooling, and we're also going to introduce a method for solving differential equations called separation of variables. So Newton's Law of Cooling relates the temperature of an object T in a cooling or heating bath after a particular amount of time, little t, using this differential equation. dt dt equals negative k times big T minus big T of m, where Tm is the temperature of the medium, and k is a constant that relates the cooling of the object to that of the medium. All right, so let's kind of explore this uh, this differential equation because it's actually really, really, it's a canonical example. It's very powerful um, as an example, and then it allows us to kind of show um, how we do separation of variables. Okay, so let's first take a look at this, uh, this DE. And let's ask ourselves a, a, a question. Notice that T, big T, is the independent, is the dependent variable. And when we look at this differential equation, notice that little t is not in the differential equation. So there's no little t there. So what that means is that this differential equation, or the heat of the, uh, the rate of change of the object, is only going to be dependent upon the big T temperature of the object. So let me say that again. The rate of change of the object, so big dt over little dt, is going to be... Uh, only dependent upon the temperature of the object at time t. So little t is not going to uh, make a difference in terms of that rate of change. And so if we imagine our slope field, our slope field is also going to only have, it's going to have constant values uh, um, for the slopes all along each value of essentially our y-axis or our dependent variable. Okay, And so the DE is only dependent on temperature. One other thing to also notice is that if we were to set dt dt to equal to zero, right? So we set dt dt equal to zero, then, right, we get negative k times t minus tm, right, equals zero. So when t equals tm, the system is at equilibrium. So we have an equilibrium solution right there. All right, something to get that the temperature of the medium, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, we want to imagine the temperature of the medium is um, is constant, right? So it's an infinite size bath, it's always being heated up or cooled down to that particular, uh, to, to that particular temperature, okay? Um, and so when the temperature of the object, T, or call it T of T, equals the temperature of the medium, then the system is going to be at equilibrium, right? Because then T minus TM equals zero, Right, which gives me that T equals Tm. Right, so that's something that we want to really notice about this particular differential equation. One, it's only going to be dependent upon T, the temperature of the object at any time. Okay, and two, the system's at equilibrium when the temperature of the object reaches the temperature of the medium. Well, that kind of makes sense if you know anything about physics, because basically what's going to happen is, is that either the temperature of our object is going to decrease until it hits the temperature of the medium, and then there's not no force, no, no thermodynamics that are actually happening to actually drop the temperature of the object down any further. So consequently, it's all going to stay out. It's going to end up being at equilibrium. And that's what we mean by being at equilibrium, right? It's going to have an equal equality of the system. Okay. So that's something to get about this particular system. And we'll take a look at a, a graph of one in just a little bit. Now let's take a look at this differential equation. And what we want to do is we want to solve now for t. We want to find a solution to the differential equation. Find a function t of t that's going to satisfy this different differential equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize, I'm going to use separation of variables. All right, so our first method for solving differential equations. All right, so I will take this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate out my, d, my big t's and my little t's. So I'm going to take d, dt Okay, and I'm going to divide by t minus tm. All right, important to remember that tm is constant. Okay, so it's just a constant value. And that's going to end up equaling negative k little dt. And so while it doesn't exactly work like this, it's kind of like multiplication, right? You kind of have a division here, dt dt. Okay, and what we do is we basically are going to split those up, okay, by multiplying uh, the dt to one side and then dividing out by all of our. Uh, values for big T 
on the right hand side. Now, once we've done that, now we're going to do the thing that we're going to do constantly throughout all of differential equations. Now we're going to integrate. So I'm going to integrate dt over t minus tn. Okay, and that's going to equal the natural log of the absolute value of t minus tm. Okay, and then that'll equal the integral of negative k dt, which equals negative kt plus some constant c. So now I'm just going to do some uh, algebra. One thing to get about this here, about what's happening inside of this situation, is that um, tm1 is constant, and then t right okay is um and that uh t is always going to be uh approaching tm okay so let's uh raise the e the natural log of t minus tm and that equals e to the negative kt plus c and now what we've got we've got um a couple of things one this is going to be t minus tm okay and that's going to equal and what I want you to do here is we're going to make this e to the negative kt times e to the c. So just remembering your laws of exponents, that means that uh, the bases are the same, okay? So that addition sign can actually turn into a multiplication of two with the same bases. And this thing here is constant. So I'm going to just change it to a constant. You're going to see this a lot. So this is going to become ce to the negative kt. Then I'm going to move over my t tm. So t of t is going to equal... CE to the negative KT plus TM plus our initial temperature. And so this, this is the general solution for Newton's law of cooling. Now there are a couple things to notice here. One, well, this is going to be a the temperature of the medium. If we don't know that, there's nothing we can do, okay? Um, we're going to need two initial conditions, one to find negative K and one to find C. Okay, so we're going to need two pieces of information in order to do that. They don't actually have to come from uh, a derivative and the function itself. They can both come from the function because if you'll notice, um, Newton's law of cooling, right, is just first order. Okay, excuse me, it's first order. But because we have the two constants, we're going to need two. We need two pieces of information or two in initial conditions, some data, basically. Okay, so let's actually utilize this, all right? Well, first, actually, let's review separation of variables. So what separation of variables means is, is that we're going to take, uh, we've got dt dt times negative k times t minus tm, right? So we've got this uh, derivative here, okay, equals uh, some set of functions. And in order to separate them, we have to be able to separate our, um, our, our differential equation into just the dependent on one side and just the independent on the other. And once we've done that, then that allows us to go out and integrate both sides. Okay, so that's what I did. Basically, I'm going to integrate both sides. You'll see me actually go through and just put the integration signs and then work downward, right, as I, as I go and solve. But in this case, it made a little bit more sense to work horizontally. Okay, so I've got the integral of dt over t minus tm, right? That's an actual log, t minus tm, right? And then I take the integral of the other side, yes? And the other piece here that we have is this little move right here, which is to take e to the negative kt plus c, okay, right? And then transform it into the e to the c, and then we can just replace e to the c with just a standard constant value, okay? Which is what we do all the time. You're going to see that quite frequently. Now let's take a look at an example. A hot metal bar whose temperature is 350 degrees Fahrenheit is placed in a room whose temperature is constant at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After two minutes, the temperature of the bar is 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Using Newton's law of cooling, determine the temperature of the bar after four minutes and the time required for the bar to cool to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually utilize that base function that we have. So t of t is going to equal ce to the negative kt plus tm. Okay, what we're going to notice is that tm is going to equal 70 degrees. Okay, um, 
and we've got t of zero. Our temperature of the object at time zero is going to be 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we also know that T of 2 is going to equal 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm going to utilize that information. So I've got T of 0, which equals 350 degrees, is going to equal, and that'll be CE to the negative K times 0 plus 70. So notice I'm going to start out with this T of 0 value because what that's going to do is it's going to be 0 out my exponent. All right, which will allow me to just have a, keep my C all by itself. So this then gives me 350 equals C, right, times, and this will be 1, C plus 70. And so that means that C is going to equal 280. So now I have the next part of my function. Okay, so now I'm going to take T of 2, and that's going to equal 210 degrees. And that'll equal, now we know what C is, C is 280, E to the negative K times 2 plus 70. Subtract out the 70, we end up with 140 equals 280 E to the negative 2K. Then we have 1 half equals E to the negative 2K. We'll take the natural log of both sides, so natural log of 0.5 is going to equal um, negative 2k. And then what we'll do is we'll plug that into our calculator. Don't come in. Dividing by negative 2, what that gives me is it gives me that k is going to equal negative 0.3466. Thereabouts, approximately that amount. We'll go to four variables in this case. And so now what we have is we have that t of t is going to equal 280 e to the negative 0.3466 t plus 7. And that's our function. Okay. So essentially what I did was I took that function that we have for Newton's law of cooling, I plugged in my initial temperature tm, right, for 70. And then I utilize my two conditions in order to basically construct a system of equations, right? Using uh, T of zero to solve for C first, okay? Right, and it's a little bit different than we normally have. Normally, that constant is just gonna be the initial value, right? Or that's one of the things that we've seen quite often. It doesn't quite work that way in this case, and you can't count on that for all differential equations. So you're gonna have to actually go in, plug it into the equation, and, and you know, um, and then solve. Right? But once we've done that, then we can utilize the second equation in order to solve for k, and then that gives us the value for k. After that, all it is is a matter of plugging in c, k, and our value for the medium, okay? and that now gives us our function. So now, the temperature of the bar after 4 minutes, well that's little t, so that's t of 4 is going to equal 280 e to the negative 0.3466 times 4 plus 70. Okay, and so that's number one. And then number two, the time for, uh, required for the bar to cool to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll just quickly review this one. 100 equals 280e to the negative 0.3466t plus 70. Okay, let's just move that up so that we could actually do that all in one space. Okay, well, let's take a look at number two. So we'll subtract 70. So this ends up giving me 30 equals 280 e to the negative 0.3466. Okay, then we'll divide by 280. And that gives me 0 0.10714, etc. equals e to the negative 0.3466. Take the natural log. And generally what I do with these, especially with differential equations, is I just plug in my answers um, so that I round at the very end. So the natural log of my answer, okay, times t. And so I end up with a basically negative 2.23359 equals negative 0.3466t. And then I'll divide by negative 0.3466. And that gives me now that T 
is going to equal, and I'll round to four decimal places here too, 6.4443 Minute, uh, minutes. All right, and that's just a refresher. Um, we can always do a little bit of a refresher when it comes to logarithms and working with logs. You're going to work with the logs a lot inside of this class, so make sure that uh, you feel really comfortable with this process. Okay, so once we've actually, um, you know, once we have a solution or a general solution for that differential equation, what this allows us to do is it allows us to like really go through and solve any kind of problem that has to do with any kind of cooling. And this is one of those fundamental thermodynamics problems, right? Which is super interesting and super valuable. And uh, hopefully it'll be really handy for you too. Okay. Uh, we'll be working on these more inside of class. So I will be talking to you soon. And that ends the lesson.